What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here, and today I'm excited because we're gonna go over one of the most ubiquitous brewers in the game, and that is the Chemex. Now this brewer typically gets a lot of hate, and understandably so, uh, and I'm gonna talk about why, because I know a lot of you use this as your daily brewer, and you may not understand why you're getting certain cups, or why you see a lot of baristas, snobby baristas hating on them, um, Anyway, today I wanna to show you, you can get really great cups from it with just a few simple, potentially, things around your house. Um, so, to begin, why is there an issue with the Chemex? Well, first of all, uh, this flute. This is the, the, the elephant in the room, is this flute right here, this chute, all right? The issue with that is whenever you put your filter inside the Chemex, what can happen is that filter can clog this chute. And if it clogs the chute, there's no airflow and it will stall your brew. You have to have some sort of airflow in order for that drawdown to occur. So when you brew with a carafe that has a lip on it and you put your pour over device on top, there's that lip that allows airflow. Well, because this is all one piece of glass, there is no airflow other than this chute. So an issue has been the filter clogging the chute, stalling the brew. Another issue dealing with the chute is that water can easily bypass there. So you're going to get some unintentional bypass of water, which can affect your brew, and it's, uh, it's difficult to be consistent with the Chemex because of that. Another big glaring issue is the filter itself. Now the filter material I actually really enjoy. The issue is because the filters are just a square, or if you have the circle version, all it is is a fold and a half and a fold and a half. So you can't get an equal two flaps of the filter on each side, because if you were to do that, look, it can't hold the coffee. So what you're supposed to do with the Chemex filter is one flap to three flaps. Now, for obvious reasons, that's problematic, right? There's gonna be a higher flow out of this side than out of this side, right? Uh, and so what you're typically told to do is line the three flaps up with the side of the chute, which makes sense. You want it to be stronger so it won't clog, but even still, that clogs often. And more times than not, I see people put the filter in however they like, which just increases the issues. So we have a problematic brewer here, but it's been one of the longest used brewers since the early 1900s. So how can we figure this out to make some really great cups of coffee? We'll have a couple of hacks that I want to show you today. And all you need is some sort of stir stick, okay? I'm using a glass stir stick. You can get these on Amazon or somewhere else. Uh, just type in like glass stir sticks, borosilicate stir sticks. I love these, I have like, a lot of them at home, uh, they're incredible. Uh, a pair of scissors, and then some some sort of piece of silicon. I had this laying around my house, uh, but just some sort of silicon that's, you know, make sure it's uh, uh, food safe, but some sort of piece of silicon. I'm just using, I don't even know what this is, to be honest with you. It was just something I had laying around the house, but silicon, maybe an old phone case. Um, all right, so with those three things, let's continue. The first hack I'm gonna show you is how to make this paper filter better. Uh, I found this hack from Ray Murakawa, the founder of the Mellow Drip. Uh, so I'm gonna give credit to where credit's due because I did not come up with this, but I am gonna show you how to do it. And the idea is to make this filter into two flaps on each side as opposed to three and one. Now this is a little labor intensive, but I would recommend just doing like 10 at a time in one sitting, do 10 where you're uh, doing the hack, and then you'll have the next 10 days lined up. And then every few so often, cut and uh, make them. So the way we're gonna do this, very simple. You're going to take your filter and open it up like a book. So from above, you see I have the open side here. We're gonna take it and we're gonna open it like a book, all right? So the folded part is down here, the non-folded part is up here. Now what we're going to do is on this side, on the left page of our book, right here, we're going to take the scissors, put it into the crease, and we're gonna cut along the crease. You see this? I'm cutting along the crease. And then right before we get to the very end, I'm gonna turn and do a 45 degree cut right there to this middle crease. See that? So I cut along here, made a little crease right there. See that? So on our left page of our book, we cut and then 45 degree. All right, so now we're gonna open this way, okay? We're gonna turn it. So now if we have the four quadrants here, the bottom right has our 45 degree cut. We're going to fold up, all right? Then we're going to fold over across this crease. So you have to refold the crease, okay? And then this piece, we're gonna fold under. Boom. This is the hack. So check it out from above. Instead of one and three, we have a filter 
That is two and two. So in the front angle, check it out. We got two flaps there, two flaps here. So much more even for our extraction. Now, we have our filter. And again, I know that's a little labor intensive, but it's only two cuts with, with scissors. So it's a really easy fix. And I'm telling you, these are actually really nice filters once you do this. All right, so now we have that hack out of the way. The other hack with that piece of silicon I told you to grab, uh, if you have a phone case or something, just cut a piece out. What we're going to do is simply, and from the above angle, we're gonna cover that chute. Because it's silicon, it has nice friction and it's not gonna move. Like if you pull at a, if you pull straight, it's not gonna wanna move, you have to pull out, right? So the reason for this is the silicon's gonna act, uh, it's gonna do two things for us, all right? Two things for us. One, it's gonna disallow the paper from clogging that chute. So there's always going to be airflow. So you won't have a stalled brew because of that. The other thing it's going to do is it's going to negate that little dip where bypass can occur. So essentially we have a ribless brewer for the most part, which is going to really help us um, increase that contact time and decrease that bypass. Of course, the Chemex filter, they're, they're all folded just a little differently. So there's never gonna be a perfect suction. Uh, so there's always going to be some bypass that we can't measure, but that's okay. In fact, it's probably preferred because you can still get a stalled brew uh, to an extent even with uh, with like this ribless brew. So uh, these are the two hacks that we're going to implement today on our brew. So um, on top of these hacks, I'm gonna show you a recipe that I really, really enjoy uh, that I found works really well. Um, I'm gonna do 40 grams of coffee, okay? That's a big dose. And the only reason I would ever recommend using a Chemex is for big doses if you wanna brew one time. I'm gonna do 40 grams of coffee, ground quite coarsely. So I'm gonna show from this above angle, boom. Okay, so it's pretty coarse. This is 30 clicks on the Commandante C40, which is uh, 900 microns. So just shy of a thousand, all right? And then we're gonna take 40 grams of coffee to 650 grams of water. So just over a one to 16 ratio, all right? Just a little bit over it. And then the way we're gonna break the pours up is a 100 gram bloom, a 100 gram second bloom, then a 200 gram pour, a 150 gram pour, and a 100 gram pour, all right? So we're gonna do, that's gonna be our pouring. Uh, and we're gonna do the first two pours, 30 seconds apart, then a minute between each pour after that. All right, so I highly recommend rinsing these filters quite well because it's so much paper. There is a noticeable paper taste. And as you're pouring water over it, you'll smell a lot of papery smell coming up. So I highly recommend a heavy rinse on these filters. And I also recommend the bleached filters. The brown ones will have a lot more paper taste that you'll notice in your final cup. All right, so we've got our paper wetted. We've dumped our uh, rinse water. Make sure to dump the rinse water. That will be tragic. And uh, we have our setup ready. So now we're gonna take that glass stir stick that I asked you to have, or some sort of chopstick or a thin pin or anything, and we're gonna go ahead and just lay it into our Chemex, all right, and tear the scale. Now, on top of that, we're gonna dump our grounds. All right, so I'm doing 40 grounds, ground, rough, uh, ground quite coarsely, all right? Tear the scale again. All right, so now I have my glass stir stick in here or chopstick or whatever you have, and I have my mound. Now what I'm going to do from the above point of view is I'm gonna take this and watch. I'm gonna just rotate and rotate and rotate. And I'm slowly spiral in. And you see how that's creating a divot? Look at that, boom. All right, so now we have a divot. And this is an important uh, thing to do, all right? It's going to allow us to, uh, to saturate our bed more fully, more quickly here at the beginning. Um, and because the bed is so deep, that is highly necessary, all right? So we are ensuring that we're gonna fully saturate this bed with as little um, uh, motion as possible. So just so you know, as I'm sure you, you already have found out if you brew with a Chemex, these are prone to having stalls, okay? So doing this is going to allow us to do less agitation to fully saturate everything uh, and, and to decline those stalls. All right, so now we have this ready and I'm gonna start the brew. So for the water, I'm using boiling water right off the boil and I'm gonna start brewing. If you're using a darker roasted coffee, feel free to use less hot water um, because it's going to extract less. And so if you have a darker coffee, you can get a lot of bitters if the, if the water's boiling. I'm using boiling because I'm using a lighter roasted Ethiopia coffee today. Um, so. I recommend boiling unless you're using darker coffees, then go down a bit. All right, so we have our coffee boiling, or our water boiling, and we're going to start our timer, and I'm gonna pour 100 grams starting in the center and spiraling out. All right, we're at 100. Now I'm gonna do the spin. I'm gonna take it and look closely from above. You see those clumps down below? 
I'm gonna keep spinning until we see those clumps go away. And then we're gonna have that gas come up. The CO2 is releasing. This is about a week off roast, so we're gonna have a really nice crust forming. And that's why we're gonna pour a second bloom. The gases are being caught behind this crust that I formed. Now watch on the second pour. I'm gonna pour a second 100 at 30 seconds. Look at all the gases coming out. See that? Pouring to 200. And then again, I'm going to swirl until I see those clumps go away, all right? So we don't wanna overdo that swirl. We don't wanna overdo it because if we do, you're going to have fines shooting out of that bed and clogging the filter. We wanna do just enough to declump uh, and to saturate fully. Get all those gases out. Now, at a minute, we're gonna do a 200 gram pour and it's gonna be aggressive. And we're at a minute, 200 gram pour. So we're pouring to 400. And I'm just doing circles kind of in the middle, pouring up to 400 and boom. And I'm just gonna do a slight gentle swirl. I'm not, I'm not doing heavy agitation. I'm doing a gentle one just to resituate the bed. When we're pouring aggressively, all those particulates are shooting into suspension, all right? They're everywhere, They're gonna, but they immediately wanna settle back into a bed. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to immediately do a small little swirl because what that allows is to, it allows us to settle that bed and to negate potential channels. So that is a huge thing that we're trying to do here. But if you're too aggressive, you will get a clogged brew. So don't be too aggressive, all right? Now, I chose to use an Ethiopia on this video because Ethiopias produce a lot of fines. So if you have a less than ideal grinder, I want you to see what even a coffee with a lot of fines um, is gonna drain like. So it will take a while to drain. The final brew time, don't worry about it. The final brew time could be six minutes, it could be seven. It's not that big of a deal. You're going to enjoy the coffee regardless because on this brew, we're losing a lot of heat. And let me get this to 550. All right, yep, there we go. I didn't wanna miss my mark while I was talking. On this, because it's glass, we're gonna lose a lot of heat. It's gonna lessen the extraction as you're going. I actually took a uh, one of those infrared thermometers and was measuring the, the, the slurry temperature and it quickly goes down because the wide surface area and because there's glass just sucking the heat out. So it's not a big deal. The long contact time is not a big deal. So don't worry about it. Obviously if it's taking 15 or 20 minutes, there's an issue there. But other than that, just make sure that when you're doing the swirls, you're not being overly aggressive. All right, so we're nearing to the three minute mark and our water is actually cooling a lot as well as it's sitting here, unless you're putting it back on your, um, back on your base in between pours in order to raise that temperature back to boiling. I'm not doing that because I know this contact time is going to be long. And so it's lessening, I'm lessening agitation and I'm lessening the uh, temperature as the brew goes. For this final pour, I am pouring more softly because as I said, I'm not wanting to shoot all those fines out. And as this is ending, um, more and more bitters are coming out of the coffee. So I'm trying to just lessen that by pouring so softly. And I'm gonna do just a little swirl once more to end. So now I'm at my 650 grams. I finished pouring around three minutes and 10 seconds. And now we're gonna let it just, um, we're gonna let it just drain. And as you can see from above, we have a nice flat bed and that water is running through nicely. This ended up right at a five minute brew time, which is not that bad actually. Um, so like I said, what you're gonna experience with this is probably four minutes and 30 seconds will be the fastest draw through, uh, draw down, and it can go up to seven or eight minutes. And with all of those, I've had incredible cups, okay? And you're gonna get this, what this has been giving me is anywhere between, for you nerds out there, it's giving me anywhere between 1.25 TDS up to 1.5, depending on the coffee. Okay, so that's that's around uh, like an 18.5% to a 20-ish percent extraction, which is actually quite good for a Chemex. Um, of course, you can do a finer grind, um, you can do more agitation, you can stretch your ratio, but this is just a starting uh, recipe. You know, I like to give recipes that are tweakable. Uh, you can change the amount of pours. You can change the emphasis of where you're pouring more at. You could do a 300 gram pour first instead of 200 and take away from the latter two pours. But this is what I have found to be the most consistent and delicious brew that I've been able to create. So I highly recommend giving that a shot. Um, I'm about to pour some out and then check how my brew was. All right, so let's give this a taste. Delicious. The Chemex can be an incredible brewer. Just got to do a little bit of a hack. 
And again, I recommend you trying out those filters in that way. You can use them on other brewers as well, because I'm telling you, it's actually a really nice filter. Thanks again to Ray Murakawa for that hack. And uh, again, on that silicon, you can use like a cell phone case or something, just rinse it and uh, use that to block the chute. And I'm, uh, I'm excited to, for, for you all to try this out and to let me know some feedback. Um, anyway, I hope this elevates your Chemex experience. I hope it's not too complicated. I'll put the recipe below in the comments, as well as what my little piece of silicon is if you actually like that one. So anyway, thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Of course, if you don't, leave some feedback. I'm happy to listen and to do whatever it takes to give you as much accessible content as possible. Um, and then I'm gonna link some videos at the end if you'd like to keep watching some. I did a V60 video last week that I really enjoy. It's a recipe I think is pretty great. And then I have a pour over 101 that um, I did the week before. Thank you so much. Cheers.